What is the best e-bike for the heavier riders out there? Let's go find out. Riders, welcome back to Sam's Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, but today it's Sam's bar. We're actually in Portugal for a family holiday and we rented a bit of a special house because we're kind of still isolating. Spain's not so great with the COVID, so we're, we're kind of just keeping it pretty low key, but I've always wanted my own bar and this place is beautiful. And on this episode, I'm gonna change things up a little bit and give you a little bit of news before we jump into the feature. Before we get into the news, there is another giveaway on at Sam's Bikes. A couple of weeks ago on Instagram, I saw this cool artist, Standout Bikes. He draws sketches of your whip, and I bought one, and I love it. I think he does really cool artwork, and I'm a photographer, and I really do like supporting the young and the new artists. We have teamed up, and we are giving away a drawing of your e-bike whip. How to enter, it's super simple. All you need to do is post a pic on Instagram of your whip. Hashtag, draw my whip, tag Sam's Bikes, tag Standout Bikes, and you're done. The winner will be drawn on the 23rd of August, on my weekly YouTube video. Now for the YT Decoy fans out there, or Sam's Bike fans, you can have your own Sam's Bike 2019 custom YT t-shirt. I think they're looking pretty rad, and the link will be below. Go and order one, support the channel. And for the Santa Cruz fanboys out there, my mate Brett from Adventures with Warby has just dropped his review on the Heckler. I've also reviewed the bike, and guys, if you haven't seen the reviews, hop online, check them out, links below. And if you have any questions about the Heckler, hit me up because in about a week and a half, I'm gonna be talking to Brett on Zoom and we're gonna be talking all things Heckler. And any questions, ask them and we will answer them. And massive news for the specialized owners out there. If you bought a Levo or a Canevo in 2019 or 20, Specialized has extended the warranty two years, making it a total of four years from purchase date. I actually think this is really impressive from Specialized. There was a problem with the Bros motor. They've addressed that. 2021 motors have been updated, firmware has been updated. And Specialized has just acknowledged this and given that extra warranty. And also, drum roll please, They've also given this warranty on to the second owner. So if you sell your Levo or if you're buying a Levo or a Canevo, this warranty will be extended on to the second owner, which is massive. This is really gonna change the way people buy and sell their Specialized because it is a massive worry when you're buying these expensive bikes not to have a warranty. As sure we dropped their lineup of tires for 2021, great marketing advertising again from Shorby. They have changed the eddy current to have a super trail casing on the front. And also there's a new super DH casing in the Magic Mary and entering the new Big Betty on the back. Okay, on to the feature for this week. What are the best e-bikes for heavier riders? For me, the e-bike is the best equalizer that has ever been in the mountain bike industry. I can go riding with my dad, or I can go riding with a pro mountain biker and still have a great time. So it is really a great option for someone that has put on a bit of weight and is looking to get fitter. Because you can use that e-bike to start out, you know, really use the motor, and as you get fitter, losing a little bit of the weight, you can use less of that resistance and just keep on growing into that bike. And a massive shout out to Lloyd Wiggins who reached out a couple of weeks ago and he's looking for the perfect e-bike. Lloyd's actually recovering from cancer and he said he's put on a little bit of weight. So what he wants is an e-bike that he can first of all get fitter and healthier, uh, gain confidence. He likes the idea of enduro and downhill so he wants a bike that he can grow into. And also the budget is around four to four and a half thousand pounds. And he also 
wants the bike to be purchased on a zero finance deal. So there's a lot in there, but we're gonna definitely find Lloyd the best bike on the market. But first of all, I just wanna say congratulations for recovering from cancer. And I really think getting an e-bike and getting out there, getting that blood through your body, you're gonna feel a lot better straight away. And as I said, it's the greatest equalizer. I get this question quite a lot on the channel about weight limits. And I kind of expected the e-bikes to be quite similar, but I was wrong, really wrong. It's um, quite different across the board. So I've done some research and please writers, don't quote me on all these numbers. Do your own research if you are gonna buy one of these bikes because some of the information is a little bit misleading. The numbers are as such. Commensal, 120 kilo rider with full riding gear. YT, 150 kilos rider with all riding gear. Canyon, 120 kilos, including the e-bike rider and riding gear. Giant, 132 kilos, rider in full riding gear. Cube, 125 kilos, including e-bike, rider and all riding gear. Specialized Levo, 109 kilos, including rider and riding gear. Specialized Kinevo, 136 kilos, rider and full riding gear. Merida, E160, 140 kilos, including e-bike, rider and full riding gear. And the top model, the 10K, 120 kilos because of the carbon wheels. Trek, 136 kilos, including e-bike, rider and riding gear. Orbea, 110 kilos, including rider and full riding gear. High bike, 120 kilos, rider with full riding gear. So Lloyd said he's around 100 kilos. Let's add on seven kilos for all the riding gear, including water, helmet, shoes, all that stuff. So we're around 107 kilos full payload. Let's first look at the Giant Trance with 132 kilo weight limit for rider and riding gear. So we're easily fitting there. And it was actually a bike that Lloyd was saying he's interested in because they're actually in stock at the moment. He likes the look of it. And they do a very interesting zero finance deal. As you guys might remember, I tested the Giant Rain E about four months ago. I love that bike, it's a mini downhill rig, and I'm pretty sure the Trance is not far off it. So for 4,000 pounds, the Trance offers a very good bang for buck. Running on 27 wheels, 150, 140, Fox suspension, 12 speed Shimano running gear, Shimano four piston brakes, Yamaha Sync Drive 80 Nm motor. Looking at the geo numbers, the Trance is a trail bike through and through. The large with 460 reach, long 470 chainstay, which I actually liked on the rain, 66 and a half degree head angle and a 74 degree seat angle. I personally feel the Trance E Plus Pro is a sweet spot for the build and price. The only thing you might need to change when you start riding a little bit harder is probably the tires and also maybe getting a cush core in the back. But Lloyd, I'm gonna throw a spanner in the works and make my suggestion. I think you should be riding a Trek Rail 5. Ooh, the riders out there say, what? I know, Trek are normally quite expensive bikes, but in 2021, the new Trek Rail is a very well-priced, very good-looking bike. The Trek Rail 5 with RockShox suspension, Bosch Gen 4 motor with 85 Nm, 625 battery, for 4,150 pounds. Yep, I know I don't normally look at Trek because they are quite expensive, but the new Rail 5 is very good value, I think. Running on 29 wheels, 150 front and back, 64 and a half degree head angle, 447 chain stay, which is actually very short for a 29er. I think the Trek Rail 5 for the price is a bloody nice package. The only thing I might be changing when you start riding this bike harder is probably the tires, but I do say that about most e-bikes, and maybe the brakes. 
I'm not 100% sure about the brakes. I haven't tested them. They are four piston brakes. They're probably pretty good, but you might need to change them out. Why do I think the Trek is a better option than the Giant? Look, for me, I mean, Lloyd is getting out there again after having cancer. Um, he's put on some weight. He wants to get fit. Um, the Giant is a great option. It's a, it's a good looking bike. It is well priced. We are getting better components on the Giant, but I think the Trek is a better option because we have a more powerful motor and a bigger battery. You know, the first couple of months when Lloyd's out riding again, he's gonna try and get that blood back through his body and moving again. And I think having a more powerful motor and a bigger battery, it's just gonna allow him to rely more on the motor and battery side. So really just give him the confidence to go out and use that bike in the higher resistant mode. So the bike's really helping him a lot more. And as he gets fitter, he can drop that resistance down and start pushing the bike more and using more of his body strength. Okay, riders, now let's look at the finance deals. Look, personally, if it was me, I would get a interest-free credit card, 18 to 24 months. If I hadn't paid the bike off by then, I'd flip it onto another one. I just feel that you can get better deals when you're dealing direct like that. Um, but Lloyd, if you don't want to do that, um, I reached out to the Facebook groups, eBike Smile and EMTB forums. Wealth of knowledge out there, riders. If you haven't joined these groups, you really should. And they said pretty much any bike shop or any good bike shop in the UK will have finance deals. Um, so Lloyd, go check that out. And I definitely wouldn't be just going down the giant route just because they're offering zero finance. And riders, have I missed anything out there? What do you think uh, Lloyd should be riding? Any suggestions, hit me up. And Lloyd, as I said, congratulations on recovering from the cancer. I really hope this helps. If you have any questions, hit me up. And riders, remember, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, share my channel. It really means a lot. And Stay safe out there, and I hope you enjoyed my bar, and I'll see you next week.